Hello, beautiful people. Okay, right. Um, this video? Well, I had a dream in the middle of the afternoon. Yeah, I took a nap. Usually, I don't, I don't do that. I mean, when I'm up, I'm up for good, you know. Uh, but lately, I've been like sporadically like, you know, you need to go to sleep. You need to take a nap. Right? And it's heavy on me. And I'm like, okay. Um, why? And even a couple times it was like, okay, I took a nap. It's like an hour, two hours, whatever. I'm trying to get up. I'm trying to get myself out of the bed. And it's just like sucking me in a magnet. Right? Okay, enough of that. Um, but I've been having um, dreams, vivid dreams. You know, and this one... Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor, pray for, oops, um, for Hawaii, not just Maui. I mean, um, when I say this dream, you'll understand. Uh, I was in a, 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 not a field, but, and not really like a jungle either, but there was bushes and plants and everything, right? Um, and there were uh, Chinese, okay, military. And they were farther, far enough away, 600 yards or more, I mean, uh, far enough where they weren't in your face, right? Not hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, I had this really strange-looking, very long, like, sniper rifle and a, and a kind of funky scope. I mean, it was really futuristic and everything. Um, and when I looked through the scope, I could see them close up. But more than that, um, I could. Uh, I wasn't using these um, abilities, but through the scope, infrared, um, night vision, there was another one, uh, thermal, and then... There was one last setting where um, I, you could see something different. I don't know. Anyways, the point was is that uh, we were defending territory, and they just kept coming and coming and coming in waves, in waves, in waves. And um, <clears throat> it, was, it was serious. Uh, it was, the, the feeling was, uh, if we don't defend our homeland, uh, we're going to be overrun. And I don't know if I was on the mainland or if I was on Hawaii or one of the other islands. But I know that there were other people there. Some were running. Others stood their ground and were fighting. Um, but it was intense. And I didn't have any fear, per se, um, just that... It was necessary. Now, now that I've said that dream got it off my chest, because, you know, I, I get these dreams, and I want to make sure that they're from the Lord, from Yeshua, Jesus. You know, that it's something he wants me to say. You know, and I kind of realized that if I hang on to it for quite a few days, you know, sometimes you remember dreams, sometimes you don't. You know, sometimes they come back, in other words. But if it keeps tapping on the shoulder, like, okay, you know, you got it. All right. So, um, my last video was about giving up your inheritance, right? Um, what will you give up for a bowl of stew or porridge or whatever else? Um, it's kind of, it it kind of came to me the other day that... Jabby jab 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 was a test run. The um, Ovid uh, one nine. I hate having to speak in cryptic parables, but you know Uncle Algorithm is listening. Uh, so I think it was a test run for the next one because. You're essential or you're non-essential. 
I think everybody is essential, right? But making a distinction and making a, a division, you know, who gets to work, who doesn't? Who has to wear a mask and who doesn't? Yes, the government was exempt, right? Um, it really silly rules, you know, uh, six feet apart. Um, have you or haven't you? Will you or won't you? You know, and then the incentives of give you a cheeseburger if you, you, you know, do what we tell you. Um, or talking about fines or exclusion or you couldn't come in or you have to eat outside. You can't come in, you know, and just all, you know, it's like dance, boy, dance, you know, do on the left side. No, wait, on the right side. Okay, in the middle. Okay, upside down and then back around, you know, juggle four oranges. Okay, sing the national anthem, you know, uh, do the alphabet backwards, you know, it, all these things, right? Almost like a um, DUI test or a drug test or whatever it is, you know, it's like, are you and will you comply? Will you give up your red stew, your birthright, for, for the stew? Esau and Jacob, right? Um, and a lot of people, you know, trust, trust the science, they say. Uh, science is a religion. Now, people say, what are you talking about? Hey, you know. If you have a white smock on and a, um, you know, stethoscope, you must know what you're talking about, right? Um, and they say it's a theory, a hypothesis, until we can prove it's fact. And, and then it's like, it must be fact until it gets disproven. Oh, yeah, that means you just found out a revealed something, you know, whether it's under a microscope or whatever else, you know, until somebody else does. Or somebody else comes up with a new popular theory. Doesn't mean it's right, but, you know, popular. Majority rules. Democracy. Well, no, it's, uh, it's supposed to be a constitutional republic. Okay. Um, and I know I'm kind of going on a rant. <clears throat> But if people, you know, it's like, if you don't have your papers showing that you, you couldn't fly, you couldn't travel, couldn't, you know, restrictions. And I notice, you know, it's like, um, pretty soon, the banking system is going to take a hit. You know, how do I know? Just, hey, writing's on the wall, Daniel. You know, uh, you've been weighed and found wanting. America, you know, should have repented. And God said he'd restore. If my people who are called by my name will repent, he'll restore the land. Well, Churches are uh, saying sweet things that people want to hear. People want to hear that hell is real and it's forever. It's below our feet. And heaven is above, right? And that's real too. Because then you'd have to acknowledge that, well, then there's a creator. Yes. There's a God in heaven. Yes, that means the other side, Lucifer, Satan, Beelzebub, fallen angels, the demons, the Nephilim, right, are all real as well. Which also means that angels, archangels, seraphim, right, and all the other things that are unseen are real as well. But to acknowledge that means that people can't live they want to live the way they want to live um, and be justified in their own minds that 
you know, I can do what I want. Well, we have free will, so you can do what you want. But there's consequences to your actions. He says, what you sow, you shall reap. You know? Uh, so, is Jesus coming back? Yeshua? He said he is. Before he left. And I wanted to interject this one. Kind of off topic, but no. Jesus crucified. Yeshua was crucified on the cross. Okay, a horrible death. I was reading in Acts and um, and the and part of John, you know, and I, I realized this that they walked and talked with him. They saw him do miracles, and he taught in the temple and their synagogues daily, right? And they come like a thief in the night and arrest him. And even then, he healed the guy because um, I think it was Peter took out his sword and chopped off his ear, you know, and then Jesus said, hey, it, it must be like this, you know, and healed the guy's ear. A miracle in front of the, um, the people that were going to take him to the high priest and have him arrested, right? Even that miracle wasn't enough to change their, their minds. But here's the thing. The apostles were with him in the garden of Gethsemane when he was taken. They were even there at uh, uh, Caiaphas, Chi you know, and John and Peter when he denied three times. They were there when Jesus and the high priest, the Yeshua, you know, were, are you the Son of God? He says, I am. Bless me, right? Versus, you know, they could have said, let's uh, d dig in more to see if it's true. No, they wanted to put him to death because he was going against the establishment. You know, they're going to lose their religion to grace and believing in Yeshua HaMashiach, uh, Jesus Christ. Now, here's the point of it. The apostles saw him on that cross. Three hours of darkness, earthquakes, the dead rose, and were seen everywhere, right? In Jerusalem. That's miracles. And they saw him die. They, Joseph, Joseph Arm, Armathia, right, um, asked Pontius Pilate for his body. They buried him. They put him in burial cloths, and they put him in a tomb. They all saw this. And they were weeping and mourning, going, but I thought he was going to restore the kingdom. That was the two people walking on the third day um, down the road. And you can read about this um, in John. So, and even then, Jesus appeared to them, but they didn't recognize him. So, he can appear and disappear. He can change form, I guess, to a certain degree where they don't recognize, because Mary didn't recognize him when she came to the tomb and thought he was a gardener or something, right? These two men walking down the street, you know, they think, God, oh, I thought he was going to restore the kingdom, right? He showed himself. They broke bread. They, it was like the veil was taken off of them, and they saw him, and he, and they knew, oh my gosh, this is Jesus. And then he disappeared, okay? And then he appeared to the apostles in the upper room, and they were like, oh my gosh. And, and this is the thing that caught me. It was like they saw him die, and all of a sudden he's standing in front of them alive. Doors are locked, and he just got, I'm here, and he's in the midst of them. It's like, I'm showing up right in front of your face. And they thought he was a ghost. And he's like, no, touch this, you know, and my side, and I'm here, right? So their mourning was turned into joy. It's going to happen again. Okay, so he witnessed um, to 120 people in the upper room, to 500 people, uh, and then 40 days later he was taken up. 
But before he left, he, he gave a command. He could go and make disciples. Um, baptize them in my name, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and they will be saved. Right? Spread the kingdom. Grow the kingdom. Tell everybody the good news. Well, what's the good news? He shed his blood on the cross so that we can be redeemed, reconciled back to God. Because Adam was perfect in, in the garden, walking and talking with God. We are no, we're not perfect, right? Until he restores us to being perfection. The mortality must take on immortality. The corrupt, corrupted body will take on immortality. There's going to be a change. He's coming back. He says, I'm coming back, but I'll leave with you with a comforter. The Holy Spirit. So we're not alone. Even though this whole world is set up against us, you know, that the guy or the person with the most toys wins. Ah, no, no, no. Right? You just take nothing with you. You come into this world naked, right, with nothing, and God willing, you have parents that love you and take care of you, you know, and nurture you and bring you up. Um, and even then, you're on loan from God um, because he ultimately owns everything and everybody, but he puts us in charge of little ones, right? And just like a bird, eventually, okay, fly away from the nest. Um, but then when we die, sure, we're put in a casket, we put on nice clothes and everything else, but we leave this world with nothing as well. Um, there's one difference. If you have the Holy Spirit, you know, people say, I'm born again, I'm born again. Well, God knows the heart and knows who he has chosen to give his spirit. Um, not everybody gets that privilege or the honor, right? To have God living inside of you. Um, it's pretty awesome. Uh... So, how do you get there? Well, be baptized and believe. Or is it, you know, sorry, dyslexia. Believe and then be baptized. Just like the eunuch and Philip. Um, after Philip explained the book of Isaiah. I think it was Isaiah or Ezekiel. I think it was Isaiah. Anyways, <clears throat> then he says, I believe. And, you know, there's a body of water. Philip says, well, if you truly believe with all your heart, see, faith, belief, trust, go ahead, get baptized. Dunked in the water and then come up, right, fully immersed, not a sprinkling of water on your head when you're a little tiny baby. Um, you have to know what you're doing and why. Uh... So the apostles, 3,000, 5,000 in a day, right, were baptized, believed and baptized and then filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts 2.38, you know, you're baptized and you receive the Holy Spirit and the gifts thereof. Everybody has different gifts. So not everybody's the same. So you can't compare because we are all individuals. We are unique. So I don't know why everybody tries to be like somebody else. Um, the one we want to be like is Yeshua, Jesus. Right? He gave his example. He lived a sinless life. So he, you know, <clears throat> by shedding his blood, made a way for us to be with him forever. And uh, in Romans, uh, the wages of sin is death. So, Going against God's will, or being obedient to Him, this is called disobedience, right? Do your own thing, go ahead, you know, be your own God. But there's a price to pay, like I said, you know, you will end up in hell. We're all on the road to hell unless God taps us on the shoulder, pulls us out, you know, gives us a 
epiphany, a revelation, or when you hit rock bottom and you're laying on your back on the ground, the only thing you can do is look up, okay? But not, you know, some people have a, a quick revelation of um, understanding. Others need to be beat over the head a few times until they finally get it, okay? Um, so he is the way, the truth, and the life. Um, the apostles, after, right before he left, Jesus said, receive the Holy Ghost, and he breathed on them. He blew on them. So they received the Holy Spirit, but they didn't get the power of So he told them, go to Galilee, and I'll meet you there, right? And then he said, you know, um, in the upper room, The Holy Spirit came up on them after Jesus left. So he went up. He says, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. It's not a, oh, I might, or I should, or I could. No, it's absolute. He's coming back. When? Don't know. Any day. He comes like a thief in the night. All right? Just as I rested him in the garden, you know, and then with a kiss, Judas like, okay, I've acknowledged who's uh, the Messiah. And they capture him, put him in chains. Well, he's coming back. Thief in the night. And I thought about this too. You know, um, at midnight, right? There's midnight around the world 24 times. Time, there's 24 time zones. That means there's 24 midnights. Because, like, well, what if it's midnight in Jerusalem, which is God's clock, his timing, you know, um, and we should watch Damascus when that falls. But, you know, if it's daytime over there, then it's nighttime somewhere else, right? Well, since the sun rules the day and the moon rules the night, we have a clock. We also have a celestial clock above, above our heads, um, <clears throat> showing times and seasons, you know. So, in a 24-hour period, could be the rapture. Does that mean 24 times? Well, no, but if he's coming at midnight, because it says destruction comes at noon, and in one hour, you know, things will be destroyed. So it's going to be sudden, sudden destruction. When they say peace and safety, it'll be sudden destruction. Well, that also means the rapture is going to be coming sudden. Why? Because he's not going to let the enemy know, you know. You don't telegraph, like, I'm going to move all my pieces over here so you know, so go ahead and tack there. Well, no, because if all your pieces are over there, you know, all your pawns. That leaves your king open and the queen and exposed. So where would the enemy attack? Where you put all your pieces or where you're exposed? Just saying. And that kind of ties in to the dream I had that um, America is being stripped at this moment and being set up for a fall, a turkey shoot, you know, um, I had, in 2018, I had said something, you know, kind of out of, just came out of my mouth, I said, even if they drop a nuke on Los Angeles, um, God can put a dome over me and protect me or take me out or somewhere, right? Um, also realize that we're in a fleshly body. Um, in Proverbs, it talks about cutting the silver cord that um, no flesh can enter and no sin can enter heaven, right? So if we die in a fleshly manner, the spirit goes to God. Uh, Peter, Paul was talking about, you know, absent of the body, present with the Lord. 
how he wanted to be with the Lord, but he was in this body to do God's will. Um, and you can see the flip where he was persecuting the church and, you know, um, he was there when Stephen was stole, stoned um, and killed. And even him, he says, he saw heaven open and he saw the Son of Man um, standing by, the, by the, the throne of God. You know, of course, blasphemy and stone him to death. But he was vehemently attacking the church. And when Yeshua, Jesus, appeared to him on the road to Damascus, which I think is a clue. Um, why are you attacking me? And I thought of this. I'm going to wait. You're in heaven. Saul is attacking those on the way. See, they weren't called Christians. They were called followers of the way. It wasn't until they got to Antioch and called them Christians. Um, so he was just, yeah, he got letters from the high priest um, in Jerusalem and was on his way to Damascus, which is in Syria, right? And I thought about it and go, he's attacking the believers. The believers is the body. Jesus, Yeshua is the head, and we are the body. And what do you say? Attacking me. Why are you attacking me? It's hard to go against the goads. Um, so, that kind of revelation said to me that we are His. Father God gives us to His Son. The wedding feast is a reconciliation. It was like on the cross, the head was cut off, taken. Now He was resurrected, and He was taken to heaven. He's going to come back. He says he is, right? To reconnect the head to the body. Um, you know, the high priest and the believers. We are his body. The kingdom. It's a nation, which is a the definition of a nation. It's not a country. It's a group of people. So we are a holy nation chosen by God for his kingdom. That's awesome. And it's Father God who chooses who he wills. It's up to election. Was predetermined? Yes. Talks about it. Um, and I did this in the last video where um, Esau and Jacob, you know, they were, one was chosen for mercy and glory and the other one for destruction. Esau was Edom. Edom was destroyed. Okay? So, it's not by what they did in their lives. It's by choice of God. So, would it make sense to surrender or humble ourselves before an almighty God? You know? So, he is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Right? The wages of sin is death. Um, but the gift, the free gift of God is eternal life through his son. What that means is he came down in the flesh, Yeshua, Jesus, died, shed his blood, because that's the price um, Adam and Eve in the garden, when they sinned, they covered themselves with fig leaves, right? Um, and God says, well, your works are not good enough. But I will slaughter an innocent, I think it was a lamb, a uh, lamb, uh, and covered them with the lamb. He gave them a covering, Right? He still kicked them out of the garden because they were no longer perfect. They were sinful nature. And then what did they say? Well, if they eat the tree of life, after eating the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they'll be like that forever. 
There's no going back. Kind of like, you know, you've been changed. There's no going back. And luckily, like any scientific experiment, um, there's a test group. There's ones that are given placebos and one that's actually given the stuff, the juice, whatever. Okay? Um, some people perish. Some people survive. Some people didn't get um, anything. You know, I hope you're understanding what I'm alluding to. Um, but, yeah, it was one global scientific experiment. Who would comply? Who wouldn't? Who would survive? Who wouldn't? Um, now, this is when they say, we're all in this together. Yeah. 190 nations, right? And, and I think 160 were in on this. You know, how can they agree on anything? They're always at war, fighting territory, resources, money, right? Constant wars, yet they can all agree on this. Same with the Antarctic Treaty, right? They make a, a, a decision that nobody can go to Antarctica without written permission. And even that, written permission, a license. Um, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's written in the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Liberty means freedom to move and go and do, right? Um, happiness, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, life. Okay, this was a global lockdown. What is a lockdown doing? You're arrested. What is arrest being arrested means? Meaning you are unable to move freely, right? Kind of like everybody was on house arrest out of fear, out of regulations, out of somebody said that, oh my gosh, we're having a pandemic, a worldwide pandemic. And look at all the deaths and everything else that was posted. John Hopkins. Um, Three years? Okay. Never. History of man has there been a pandemic, a V, a, a disease, whatever you want to call it, you know, coming from a bat um, that has caused so much destruction. And then all of a sudden, they announce, okay, it's over. No more masks, no more six feet away, no more this, no more that. By magic, it just went away as quickly as it came. And then um, as painful as it was by all the stupidity of mass of distancing of restrictions and you can you can't you know um you couldn't buy or sell right you couldn't go to a market you couldn't um go into a restaurant you couldn't fly you couldn't you know you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't now all of a sudden poof right squeeze let go squeeze let go testing the boundaries why setting it up for the Antichrist to have his one world everything. Pick. Government, religion, you know, economy, finances, whatever. Okay. That's his plan. What's God's plan? He laughs at him. <laughs> Go ahead. Try it. You still got to ask permission from the Almighty. And he may allow it, he may not. See you squirm, evil ones, right? But there's a time where he's going to say, enough. And he's a slaughtering king to the evil ones. He's a restoring king to those he's chosen. He came 
to preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the lost. He came for the house of Israel. Well, he thought, well, isn't it everybody? No, not everybody. Not everybody's chosen. chosen. Many are called, few are chosen. Now, this is kind of a long rant, but felt it necessary that hopefully one person, if just one person from this video says, you know what? Maybe God's right. You know, maybe I should read what he wrote to us. Well, it was written from men. Men wrote that, you know, so it's flawed. Yeah, Satan has messed with it, okay? Changed some wording to, to affect the content. But you know what? The overall message is there. And says it's the glory of a king to hide things. It's also the glory of kings to search it out, the truth. Search out the truth, right? You don't like your English or whatever your native language is? Check out the Greek, okay? And even that, it's like, okay, let's go back to the Hebrew. Um, and even that was changed. Um, that the Jews got together and decided to make their own canon of what's acceptable, you know. But the truth is there. And even then, the Holy Spirit will say, yes or no, yes or no, what's right, what's wrong, you know, will you listen? Anyway, love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully I get another dream or, or a word, you know. Um, oh, that's that's something. Uh, another dream, another nap thing. Um, I heard a bunch of words. I don't remember them, but I do remember this last one. He said the fig tree generation will be fulfilled, and it was it was stern. It was like it will be fulfilled. There's no if, and, or but. So, yeah, love you guys. See you in the next video.